الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So we're going to go over hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. And this hadith is a very famous hadith which all of us should know or be learning as this hadith has so many benefits that many of the scholars in Islam they mention this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith of Umar and the hadith has to do with your intention and remember as we said before our our deeds are accepted for what are the two things to have our deeds accepted? Who remembers? Iowa? Huh? Do you remember? Hmm, to worship Allah. No, because that is that is what we mean by our deeds accepted. We, we're worshiping Allah. We want our deeds accepted. We want our worship accepted by Allah. What are the two conditions? They have to. The first one is, is it has to be for that. If you're praying or if you're fasting or you're doing anything, it has to what? What do you, what do you have to do? No uh, intention that you have to do it for a law. So never forget this. You have to have a sincere intention. You have to have a pure niya. You have to have ikhlas lillah. So the first condition for all your deeds, if you want your prayer accepted, you want your fasting accepted, you want your hajj accepted or umrah or any deeds that you do, you want to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's the first thing is sincerity to Allah. The second condition is that we follow who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if we, want any, if we want our deeds to be accepted, those are the two conditions for worship. Let's read the hadith on Amir al-Mu'mineen Abi Hassan Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal Sama'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul innama al-a'malu bin niyat wa innama likullimriyan manawa faman kanat hijratu ila Allahi wa rasulihi wa hijratu ila Allahi wa rasulihi ومن كان هجرته للدنيا يسيبها أو امرأة ينكرها فهجرته إلى الله فهجرته إلى ما هجر إليه متفق عليه. In this hadith, the hadith of the Amir Amir al-Mu'minin. So this was the hadith of Umar bin Khattab because he was the second. He used to be the Amir al-Mu'minin, meaning he was the leader of the believers. Umar bin Khattab, radiyallahu he was the second Khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After who? Who was the first one? You mentioned it before. Before Umar, who? La, no, Abu Bakr, radiyallahu taala anhu, majmaeen. May Allah subhanahu wa taala be pleased with all of them, because some people they speak bad about the Sahaba, radiyallahu taala anhu, majmaeen. وعياذا بالله منهم وعياذا بالله من أفكارهم may Allah protect us from their evil آمين so Umar bin al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه was the second khalifa he was the Amir al-Mu'mini meaning he was the leader of the believers at that time رضي الله تعالى عنه and he was the father of Hafs أبي Hafs Umar bin al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه قال he said I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone will get that which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his Messenger, then he has migrated for Allah and his Messenger. And he who migrates for some worldly benefit, or to take some woman in marriage, then he has migrated for that which he has intended. And this is collected in Bukhari Muslim. What does that mean? That hadith is a hadith alim because like I said, many of the books in the hadith, they start with this hadith. And they mention it. 
Why? Because the intention, your niyyah, for doing anything in Islam should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything, you want to make wudu, you want to make salat, you want to make zakat, pay zakat, you want any ajr from Allah, you have to have your intention correct. And this hadith is the evidence for that. So, in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, actions are tied to the intention. That means your actions and your intentions, your deeds and your intentions are connected. And everyone will get that which he intended. So that means, Sana, that if you have a good intention and you're doing a deed like the Prophet wasallam, you're going to get ajr from Allah. And you'll get what you intended. You intended good, you intended to worship Allah with sincerity, and you follow the Prophet wasallam, then you're going to get ajr from Allah. That means you get what you intended. If you did that deed to please other people, then that's all you're going to get if you were showing off. For example, the person who prays to show off in front of the people, then all they're going to get is praise and show, and all they're going to do is show off in front of the other people. And maybe the other people will say, MashaAllah, your salat looks good. Your salat is pretty. Your salat is nice. But they don't get reward from Allah. Because this is a type of shirk. That's a type of the minor shirk. Okay? So when a person does that, they do that, they pray, or they pay zakat, or they do something to please other people other than Allah, then that's what they're going to get. They're going to get that praise from other than Allah, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not going to get the reward. So, the, so everyone gets that which he intended. And whoever migrates for Allah and his messenger, then he's migrated for Allah and his messenger. So whoever travels, leaves a non-Muslim country, to live in a Muslim country, that is great ajr. They're going to get great reward for Allah if they do it to please Allah. But if they do it for another reason, just because they want to do business, just because they want to get married or they want to do something else, then that's what their reward is. They're not going to get that ajr that the person who left a land where people don't worship Allah to a land where people worship Allah alone. Okay? So that's the difference. That's the important thing related to the intention. That everyone gets what they intended. So the person who migrates for Allah's message, then he migrates for Allah's message. That means he's going to get the ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he did it to follow the sunnah of the Prophet and he did it to be obedient to Allah, to worship Allah. Huh? No. If you what? Okay, well, we'll talk about that later, I'm, uh, inshallah ta'ala. So, as, as I was saying, so the person who migrates for Allah's messenger, he will get the reward from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who wants to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa and they are migrating to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will receive reward for that. And the person who does it for another reason, they want to show off, they want to marry somebody, they want to do something else, that they leave a Muslim country, then that's what they'll get. What happened? Huh? What did she ask? I didn't understand what she asked. What did she say to me? Every country has one God? There's only one God. La ilaha illallah. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. So different people in different countries, they worship other things like God, yes. But there's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The main thing that we want to get from this hadith is that we want to know, well, we want to know the benefits and how to practice this hadith. We practice this hadith by making our intention for who? Who do we make our intention for? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In all that we do, when we, when we do all our worship, we do it for who? Who do we worship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. 
inshallah ta'ala. So we make sure our intention is for Allah and we follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in our deeds. So uh, a, another benefit we get from this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of making the hijrah. That when you leave the land where people worship other than Allah, you will get reward if you are doing it to please Allah because you can practice your religion better. Where the people call to prayer, the people are praying at the prayer time, people are doing good deeds, people are worshiping Allah and calling to worship Allah, you'll get more ajr from that. Okay? You'll get ajr alim from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, again, this hadith shows us that first um, condition for our deeds to get accepted, and that is that we have ikhlas, we are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be sincere to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him and Him alone. And may Allah accept our good deeds and forgive our bad deeds.